they were able to take something so gloomy and doomy that is literally ugly like you know a kid hanging himself in a basketball court and make it funny make it something cool as hell now you make cool as hell <laughs>
uh, game anime movie reviews. So basically, you know, he's just, you know, ribbing on us of what we do. Actually, believe it or not, Garbanzo isn't really the tech guy. Um, I don't think so. Even though it's funny because in this outline, I made I made Gadgets R Us him, him uh, as well. But no, he's not the tech guy. Yes, Garb uh, Flex would be the health guy. Um, I absolutely agree. I'm <laughs> the director, producer, editor, editor, and creator. And Joe Tardestallion is habitually late, like he is now. So, all right. Next comment and final comment comes from, from our Geek Bros. That's G-E-K-B-R-0-S Instagram. It comes from Alexis Am Amadez, I think. Um, he says, nah, "Nice, uh, hey, nice meeting you for celebration. Sorry, I missed the panel. I was busy working Gil's duty. Hope it went well. Um, so thanks, Alexis. Um, we appreciate it. Sorry you didn't make it, but guess what? We're going to be there in 2020, and uh, we look forward to, to meeting you then or seeing you again then. And that wraps up our uh, audience participation for this episode. Flex, I mean, you got to love this. We've never had audience participation. I know, right? We're finally getting some traction we're going. Getting, we're getting some serious traction, like to the point where I'm now copying and pasting these. And there were a few more that, that I got yesterday and today after I sent the email. So I'm either going to keep the screenshots for next one or... But if you guys want us to read your comments or your questions, you know, hit us up, preferably before the Tuesday, before we do the podcast. Oh. We record pretty much every most Wednesdays because then you'll get it in the next episode. Guaranteed. Um, if, ask us uh, any question. If, if, if we get 10,000 likes, Garbanzo will do the podcast shirtless with Tit Tazras on. Uh, absolutely. And that, that is a uh, vibe and dark flex uh, guaranteed or your money back. You have no choice. <laughs> So, uh, Flex, it's just you. Tell me about your weekend. Well, last weekend, uh, it was a pretty interesting weekend. I mean, I, I, I worked a day job, which I, I do have a day job. Um, remember, mm -hmm. I, I, work, I work at a gun range. Kind of sucked. But I was uh, prepping for <laughs> for the monster that is uh, UFC Fight Night, which is going to be here in Fort Lauderdale at the BB&T Center. So I was just getting things ready because I got a couple guys in our card. I'm also the nutritionist for some of them. And uh, I actually... This whole week, I am cooking for one of the heavyweights, making sure oh, he stays on point, make sure he makes weight, giving him meals every three hours, you know, all custom to his, like, um, to his um, nutritional plan that I sent him. Just making sure he's staying happy, you know, uh, ha happy fighter, good performance, uh, making sure he's staying hydrated, making sure he doesn't think stupid. So he's checking in with me, like, every couple of hours, making sure, like, this dude, you know, sometimes he'll get bored and he'll get hungry and start eating. I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. Like oh yeah this, yeah boredom does do that. Dude, this is a forty-one year old, two hundred and fifty pound world champion. I'm like no no stop. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing are you doing any 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 butt wraps to, to to get the sweat out, get the water away out? <laughs> uh, I might. We'll see what happens Thursday. Oh god, I can't. Thursday. <laughs> Garbanzo is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Look at him. What's going on, everybody? Look, at him. Look it's good to see you, sir. It's good to see you. Listen, I want you to know that. Uh, uh, Flex, um, and I, I fully support him. He just told the, the audience that if we get ten thousand likes, that you will be doing a podcast shirtless with uh, with uh, nipple tassels. So, we, we already put it out there. Um, so I want you to know that uh, we are men of our word. So since we already guaranteed it, uh, you're gonna have to deliver. If, if not, if but when it happens, just so you know, we, I will put. I will absolutely get you the most tasteful nipple tassels I can find. Deadpool tassels. Deadpool tassels. There you go. So, just letting you know, that's what happens when you're late. All right. So, uh, so since you, you got in just in time, job. Oh, oh. <laughs> other oh, other sorry. job. Oh, day job. We just got to talk about day jobs. Can you believe this? Hey, that's that's why I'm working on our Patreon. So hopefully we don't have to do day jobs anymore. We're gonna be here just for you, the listeners. Um. So, uh, Garbanzo, you just got you just jumped in there. How was your weekend? Uh, weekend was actually pretty good. Um. I got to spend some time uh, at home and getting some stuff ready for uh, my uh, cruise coming up, actually. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I completely forgot about that. That's right. Where are you going? Where are you going? Mexico? Uh, one of the Quantanamo stops Guantanamo Bay. Is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the stops is Mexico. Yes. It's uh, Cozumel. Uh, Ocho oh, Rios. And Ocho also... Rios. Hell yeah. yeah. And then also... Um, it's Ocho Rios uh, okay. and Grand Cayman, Cayman Islands. Grand Cayman Islands. Look at you, you it's a good one. saucy minx. You. I've never been to those. I've done uh, Cozumel. I've done, you know, the Bahamas one, but I haven't gone any further than Cozumel because uh, I'm a sheltered child. Okay, so um, my weekend was a lot of, I mean, 
a lot of troubleshooting. I'm, <laughs> I love you to death, Garponzo, but your damn camera. Um, no, 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 I understand. I've, I've, me, I've been, sorry. I've been, uh, I, I'm still waiting. I, I promised you guys the, um, the, the, well, I promised you guys a couple episodes. Right now, because my camera is, is uh, even though it's fantastic, it's going to take another month or two before I get it back because, you know, reasons or whatnot. So the footage is there. I can I can review the footage. It's just I spent the weekend trying to troubleshoot this, trying to convert, trying to. That was all my that was my entire weekend was was pulling my hair out trying to figure out how do I get this thing to edit on Adobe Premiere and why I want to edit on Adobe Premiere when I can view it on on QuickTimes or whatever. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. What my weekend was was literally trying to solve this this issue, but. I might have to put it put it on an old computer and then edit it on a very 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 old, so vastly uh, inferior editing software just to get it out, um, because that's a lot of footage and it's, and I, I reviewed the Star Wars celebration footage. It was pretty good. I mean, the audio wasn't it wasn't as great, but the 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 footage pretty good. I mean, I, I was I was happy with what we did. But how was how how did the lapel mic do? Did it help? Oh man, I don't know if I if, I don't know if I actually reviewed that clip. Which clip was that? I know you did it one time or a couple of times, right? We did it. We did it a couple times uh, towards uh, me and Joe, me and Joe. I gotta look for that. I don't. I don't. I don't think I. I don't think I got to that because I. It was I, on, the, on the last day or the day before the last day or something. Like I might that. have. I might have gotten to that one because the last day's footage or some of the last day's footage was hard to get off. It wouldn't. That's what she said. Um, it wouldn't. It wouldn't come off the camera. The stuff that you. I guess I don't know. I don't know how you did it. Maybe it's because this is a Mac. But when you um. You know, remember you would ingest it into your into your laptop as a PC, and yeah. you put it on my flash drive. Well, I tried to ingest it into my Mac and put it and put it on my hard drive. It was a mess. I finally got it to work, but I had to go to my laptop and then bring it over. So Ouch. I think I, I I don't know if it's maybe maybe the thing is maybe it's just not it's a Mac. Maybe it's the Mac. Maybe that's the reason why I can't edit the soft edit the, the footage because it's a Mac. It's and I'm getting way off topic here with the with, with, with you know this is like a a meeting. But you guys just saw the inner workings. But that's what I was, my weekend was was freaking out about this footage because I want to give you guys 2019 Star Wars celebration. I want to give you guys a Shazam trailer. I want to give you guys a person inebriated uh thing and whatever else we did. So uh, that's it for the weekend. And uh, what's going on with the Geek Bros? I just told you what's going on with the Geek Bros. It's, it, there is so much on the on the cutting room floor right now. You guys have no idea. I have I I have a plethora of footage to edit, but I just it's not my fault this time. I'm trying to work through it. Um, I definitely still have the Shazam one waiting for you guys to see, but again, I got to edit it. And then after that, it's going to be just rip rawing through the Star Wars celebration. Uh, it's going to be pretty good. I still am missing two last day recaps with Flex. We're gonna have to figure that out. I don't know okay. whether 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 I go to your place, Flex, or you come here, or we do it on Skype. We didn't do day three and four, um, and it wasn't. It was partially because we because because I forgot, but it was partially because I said I could I would do it later because I was so tired those days. But it has to be done. So, but Geek Bros. Um, there's some stuff rolling around. We're still in in, in the midst of uh, wrapping up some things. I'm changing the studio to to suit a new dynamic for Geek Bros. So when we start recording face to face, which I promise you guys, we are going to start d- devoting some time, gentlemen, to come to the yeah. studio and actually record um, episodes in in person uh, instead of the cell phone videos. That's going to be different. I'm working on a potentially new intro for for season three because season three is going to be kicking off soon. We're going to be doing season three and calling it day with season two. I am working on uh, potentially a Geek Bros Patreon. I am working on potentially a Geek Bros YouTube to to shift Geek Bros to its own channel, thus um, making it easier. Because believe it or not, we are getting a lot of feedback, and one of the feedbacks is it's hard to find our content. I didn't realize it was so hard to find our content because we we keep promoting Geek Bros with a zero, but most of our titles are Geek Bros with an O, and most of our videos are all of our videos go on Viber of Studios. That's a mess. So to to for brand uniformity, I have pretty much begun the process of, of potentially. I don't know if I want to run another YouTube channel. It's, it's ridiculous, but I'm working on it. Potentially um, creating a YouTube. Well, not potentially. I already did, but I don't know if I if I'm going <laughs> to delete if I'm going to delete it or not. And it's not potentially for for Patreon. I already did. I just need to talk to you guys about the tiers and everything. So it's all going to be there. Depending upon, I just need to work on it and see if I really want to run more stuff because I'm tired. I'm a tired producer, guys. So that's Believe going on to Geek Bros. Plenty of stuff is coming down the pipe. Just stick with us. That's what she said. That is exactly what she said. And, and if anything, 
You've always got this podcast every week to see us, hear us, and listen to us. See us, hear us, listen. I said that twice. All right, that's it for the Geek Bros. Naked. So, uh, what are we going to talk about today? Today, we've got the gaming world. Video games out this week. The battle for Azeroth continues. Uh, inebriated Fitness. The, is there a dark side to fasting? Ooh. For anime and animation invasion, it's going to be Love Death Robots Review Part 2, Three Robots. We're going to do a Star Wars Clone Wars Revisited, the, the animated 2003 cartoon, not the CGI. Gadgets Are Us, Pot Robots, Vape Pens, and Elon Musk. Uh, for Open Mic, Endgame is not the end of the current Avengers story. Star Wars Master and Apprentice Book Review. And wrap it all off with Family of J.R. Tolkien does not approve of the new biopic. So it's a very short episode today. We should be done within two hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we are. Gentlemen, episode 61 begins now. It's time for the Fresh Scent. Fresh, fresh scent. scent! So, movie standing out this week, it's a no-brainer. It's Avengers Endgame. Oh, God, so, yes. This is coming out uh, tomorrow. Uh, as of right now, I'm still going tomorrow <laughs> by myself. Um... I'm going to... Garbanzo, when do you plan to see it? I'm going to try to see if I can probably see it on Sunday. Okay. Flex, when are you going to see it? As of my... Uh, probably Sunday, because Saturday I'm booked all day for that fight. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm, I'm trying to figure out you know, when we see it, and then... I guess, I guess basically we're going to have a delay on our review, guys, because, because unfortunately we can't get together. Um, well, it's like the Wonder Woman. Huh? Well, Wonder Woman, but we, no, well, no. Well, did we all watch it? No, we didn't watch it together. Well, I mean, I didn't watch it at all. No, you didn't watch it at all. No, but most of but this is Endgame, gentlemen. If there's any, we went to see Captain Marvel together. That's true. I Fuck mean, that. come on, yeah. that's that's really bad. We went to see Captain Marvel. We can't. We're not going to go see Endgame, Endgame together. We're not going to. I mean, if, like I said, I'm I'm down for Sunday. I mean, if you guys want to do it on Sunday. So as far as recording, I'm, I mean, I don't know because it's a three hour movie. If we're going to record, it would be like <laughs> one in the morning or something. What on a, on a Sunday? How, yeah, how is, we can go. No, we can go Sunday or during the day. Well, I I have to work still. Oh, what time see. Get off? Eight. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't be able to do that unless some um, somehow I can catch it before then. But even I, I don't know. No, I mean it's not about catching. I I don't mind us having having a a a delayed review. I want that 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 communal experience. I want us there together. I want us toasting to a drink together. I want us doing a Stardust reaction together. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so I, I actually, I never really intended on us to film afterward. That's why I realized it was a three-hour movie, and we weren't going to be able to see it in, like, in the early evening. But, I mean, we'll wait. So, guys, we are going to get that review to you. Unfortunately, we're not, we, we probably won't be able to see it together, but we will get that review to, uh, to you guys probably next week sometimes. I hope, because of the footage. <laughs> no, okay, is. so I, I will say that I did see a, uh, a snippet of a review for Endgame. Did you? Um, here. And no un- spoilers. Un- no, no, no spoilers. Um, but it was. I gave it out of ten, a negative three. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it said, uh, "What's the director's name? The director for 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 Endgame?" Um, uh, and Joe and Anthony Russo. Yeah, yeah the, Joe and Anthony the Russo. Russo <laughs> the Russo brothers pulled a, Re- a Ryan Johnson. What? The no! F- no! <laughs> You're lying. I hope you, yeah, that's not a real. That's not real. Where did you I, see the review on Twitter? No, no. Listen, the last Jedi was the worst thing that ever happened to me. No. <laughs> I hope it's not come to the, the come to like, the dark side, my son. Oh my god, I don't believe you. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep my head up because that's that's a really that's a bad review. That's a bad review. Uh, uh, hopefully, that's just a troll because they're they're mad because they weren't like an extra in it. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna check it out. So stay tuned. Eventually, eventually we'll get the end game uh, review out there for you, for you guys. Um, we might actually get it. You <laughs> actually might get it on the podcast before you get the, the the web series review. But we'll do the best that we can. Okay, we're still in transition for season three. All right, what's new in the gaming world? Video games out this week, presented to you by Dark Flex. That is an excellent question. So there's actually a pretty pretty big game, at least in one of my favorites coming out. Or actually, it came out on the twenty third. Exactly. <clears throat> of this week, and that is Mortal Kombat 11. April 23rd for the PS4, Xbox One, and it seems like it might come out for the PC and the Nintendo Switch, but to, uh, that is still to be determined. Then on 
On 23rd, we also have for the Switch, we have Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arson, uh, Dark Arisen. Sorry, I pulled a... Mm, uh, uh, yeah, yes, you did. Yes, you did. I know. I did I did it last week, actually. If you noticed, uh, I pulled a one, too. April 25th, we have SteamWorld Quest, Hand of Gilgamesh for the Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, we have April 26th for the PS4, Days Gone. That game looks pretty, pretty gangster, I gotta say. What kind of game is that? RPG, please? Uh, it's like a open world zombie game. It's, it's like it's like if like The Last of Us, Dead Rising, and Red Dead Redemption 2 had a love child. Hmm. Okay. I, I think it's like a much, much better... Uh, is, it, is, it, is, it multi, is it multiplayer or just a single player? I believe it would have some kind of co-op online stuff like that, but it, it is like a pretty extensive story game, just like uh, Red Dead Redemption, but with zombies and looters and stuff. I like it. I like Except it. Rats. All right. <clears throat> then we have April 26th for the Nintendo Switch. We have Box Boy plus Box Girl. That's it okay. Week. I mean, the biggest... Oh, that, oh really? That, really? That's a, that's a, so it's a slow week for video games, too. It is. Interesting. Very interesting. So... Starflex, the battle for Azeroth continues. Hit us with it. Yes. So, actually, I spent quite a bit of hours on my downtime playing Warcraft recently. You know what's crazy is um, when I first started playing, this, the, there was, like, only opening cinematics, but, like, like legit CGI cinematics. Mm -hmm. Like, like you could barely tell it's not. But now it's, like, every patch through the cinematic, and it's in-game cinematics. And, wow, I got to tell you, they look great. They look great. I've always liked Warcraft for the cinematics because of the child, like seeing orcs and dragons and, and you know. Oh, of course. Um, yeah. But now, like, um, as the story progresses, because now it, it's pretty heavily story-based, as in the classic of Warcraft, it was more just grinding, you know, killing a couple of bosses. Now it's like an actual progression of the world of Azeroth. And for those who have been playing it, I don't know if you have, I guess, spoiler alert, but, I mean, it shouldn't really be a spoiler if you're playing it. Um, it seems like uh, there is a a quite a bit of a of a feud within the alliance and the horde. Not with them this time. So Turan the Whisperwind has left the alliance or has stepped down in order to. Because if you noticed, uh, if anybody who played in the last expansion, they burned down the World Tree Tedrasil, or Sylvanas Windrunner did, which is the new war chief of the horde. And because they haven't done enough for it, Turan the Whisperwind, the high priestess of the Night Elves, has left the alliance or step down sir, so far and it seems like the horde is all turning not turning against but the, the way things are going they're not going to follow so far because she's being dishonorable and if you know anything about orcs while they might be you know bloodlust brutes they they hold honor to, to to the highest highest of virtues Standard, in, yeah. In, yeah so um right now bane bloodhooth is also uh in prison because of the war chief because he tried to help the leader of the alliance varian Rin try to find peace and you know that that kind of honest just wasn't having it so now he's imprisoned under Ogremar, which is the the, the capital of, of the orcs but that's what's going on in azeroth but other than what other than that the game's getting pretty good they, they actually have this new calendar that i didn't know or i hadn't seen before but they have calendar of special events too so they'll celebrate like easter mm -hmm. like the christmas uh yeah. the the first sunday of every month you have the dark moon fair which lasts one week and you can very easily pull up the calendar see what events are coming up and it's, it's just so much more immersive now i don't know if people are hating on it and want the classic back because the classic in my opinion sucked because it's just a grinding game with no actual progression or actual camaraderie the way they have it now it's just amazing the cinematics the opportunities to just jump in and meet new people, do new raids, and just kill stuff. It's, oh, man, it's awesome. And, and now, um, while they haven't added any new races, they have added new allies. So when you make your character now in the new expansion, you can pick the actual races that we had, but you can also go to allies. So for the humans, we have um, trolls are now allies that you can pick as a race. And they're not part of the horde, which I forgot which. I think they're the Zandalari or something like that. And then for the humans, you, I mean, for the horde, you have Kul Tiras, which is just fat humans who, like, it's funny. It's not like, I'm not making fun of that, but they're just fat pirates. Like, <laughs> their character design is, is like, 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 like just fat pirates. And I think that's pretty cool now, because now you have the option to play races that were previously only segregated by the different alliance or horde. And, and in the story of Warcraft, there's always been you know, crossing between the two, but now you can actually play through the story. So it's, I think that's pretty cool. Oh, nice! That's actually really cool. 
Yeah. I, um, are you the only geek bro playing right now? Or is, did Joe Tor ever, ever join you, or was that... Um... No, but he should. I mean, I, I got a lot of money I can send him. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. I and mean, he I can dye his hair red in the game, too. So Exactly, and and then he makes him feel more at all. <laughs> he, he should definitely make his character cucker up. Uh, <laughs> right, you should. That'd be really funny. That is, of course, an inside joke from 2019 Star Wars Celebration. <laughs> um, I don't think we did that. We, we even mentioned that on, on the camera, so... I guess uh, you just debuted that name here. All right, so we're going to move on to Gadgets R Us, uh, Pot Robots, Vape Pens, and Elon Musk. Now, I'm adding, I'm throwing this to you, Garbanzo, because you're all about the vapeness. I don't know if you read the article when I sent you that line. Are you prepared to talk Actually, about it? Actually, I did read some of the article uh, um, and also some of the stuff that they actually talk about. It's, it's mostly the article itself is basically talking about that Saturday, April 20th was – um, 420 is like this unofficial celebration for for wheat, um, and it, they say it has like different holiday, you know, the different reasons why 420 came around. Uh, one story they say they mentioned here was that a bunch of a group of California high school kids used to meet up at 420 every day after school to go search for this weed garden they'd heard about, but they never find it. Right. Um, I've also a proposition 420, which basically is, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, one of the was the first proposition to to to, to legalize uh, marijuana, so or cannabis. But the whole thing is is basically how this uh, what going back, but oh, just about two decades ago when we were you know we were kids, this is was an illegal substance that was mm-hmm. that was considered as dangerous as uh, cocaine. Um, now finally over time and you know science. And they finally realized that it's it's uh, it has a lot of men- medicinal benefits Allegedly. and um, actually proven <laughs> uh, cancer <laughs> killing proven. benefits. Allegedly. Um, Allegedly. So the whole thing is that now it's actually become um, a multi billion dollar, uh, basically a, a, a company. Basically, it, it, it's almost it's the same thing as as a. Uh, Best way to put it, corn. It's like it's it's a crop now. It's, it's a major major crop, um, and they actually you know they talk about you know just overall just different things people have been doing for it, and how um, two of the, two of the biggest names right now, which is not surprising at all, is actually uh, Snoop Dogg and Tommy Chong who well, have been really pushing. But the whole thing is like oh he is like oh I love how they put it here. Uh, rapper Snoop Dogg joined the ranks of entrepreneurs and his digital media company Mary Jane in 2015. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, dude, he's been pushing. He's been a entrepreneur since he was like 12. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's <laughs> everybody, not honestly, but every, brand. everybody else joined Snoop. Uh, same thing with Tommy Chong. Um, yeah. Or even they even had Bill Nye even came in and talked about it. But the reason why Elon Musk was actually uh, brought up, actually mentioned, was that he has and he does mention it um but again the most the most of the article itself is basically just how they have these new vape pens coming out that actually you can use proper temperature so you can actually burn at certain temperatures because um especially with concentrates um you're dealing with the lower temperature you get it's you have different levels of thc it's just there's a whole there's a, a major science which i know nothing about uh directly so it's more i just think you know it's a, it's very interesting, and um, especially having uh, a parent that has gone through cancer, and having uh, uh, another parent going through can- has been through who survived cancer, and another parent going through cancer right now. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of um, reference to, to help with chemotherapy, with nausea, things like that that kind of help with you know to help help keep food down. It, there's there's been a lot of proof in that in that aspect of it, it helps that you know as well. Like yeah, so even, this, apparently, uh, there's even yep. kosher. There's even kosher kush now. Apparently, so for those who are uh, <laughs> celebrating uh, celebrating Passover, they can also celebrate if they want to. Um, but that, but that was basically the 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 gist of the article itself. Yeah, pretty um, much the article comes from uh, CNET.com. Um, and yeah, that, you know, you pretty much summed it up. He as it states here that um, uh, Bill Nye he brought weed on an episode of uh, Netflix show Bill Nye Saves the World because science man and then for the record Bill Nye said he's never partook but Elon Musk however did last yes, year yes. the Tesla SpaceX founder went on Joe Rogan's podcast and took a hit off a joint giving the internet one of his most infamous uh, gifs uh, of our time I don't think I've ever seen that gif though oh dude it's oh, amazing it's, is it it's a fantastic yeah I'm looking yeah. at it right now it's just so good it's a good episode actually is it 
Yeah, right, well, that's that's and that's gadgets are us. I actually didn't realize that I scrolled past two other things, so we're gonna we're gonna backtrack now to inebriated fitness presented by Darflex. Darflex is an exercise physiologist with a BS. Uh huh. You didn't remind me, and I put and I put it in there. I know, but yeah. I saw it. So I was like, oh, he remembered. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, you have. I know what rum that is. That's not yeah. rum. This is it, rum? It, it, it's a rum bottle, but I'm, it's kombucha. Oh, it's kombucha, right. right. Oh, okay. So Get me excited. What, Darflex is an exercise physiologist with a BS in exercise and sports science. He's a certified CSCS strength, tr- strength conditioning coach, a CISSN sports nutritionist, sports injury specialist, and currently an MMA weight, uh, <laughs> currently an MMA weight cut specialist and nutritionist. Let me just run out. This little, this, you know, like, introduction for him is a tongue twister sometimes i just got so excited that i remembered to put bs in there so dark flex um I, 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 is there a dark side to fasting now i bring this up because um while we were in chicago i continued to fast i enjoyed fasting and and there were a few times that you insisted that i eat and only one time that i actually did listen to you and ate in the morning time well when i came back uh, i lost 2.2 pounds and you had made a comment saying that that was probably muscle weight that my body had eaten its muscle um, and I, you know, that comment has stayed with me. So it made me wonder, is there a dark side of fasting? Is there a wrong way to fast? Take it away. Yeah, of course. I mean, this is simple. So that comment I made for you is because I wanted you to eat what I was cooking, but you, you probably didn't lose muscle. It wasn't long enough. It was probably just maybe some inflammation, some water your knee was holding, or maybe just some crap in your stomach. I mean, if you would have lost two pounds of muscle, it would have, well, died <laughs> <laughs> allegedly but yeah if, if, if you fast to the point where like you're you're not giving because i mean the point of fasting is not not to eat is to give your 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 body time to recover and do proper things and get some hormonal regulation and <laughs> god damn it right. <laughs> but so when you start between what? between the birds chirping and now we've got dark flex chewing what are you eating popcorn it's not yep. like you're eating bark I mean, I apologize, guys. This is this, this is the trade-off. It's either you get the podcast every week and you hear and you partake in what's in the background, or you get it every once in a while when I can grab these guys and drag them over here to record. I, I'm choosing the lesser of two evils. Sorry, but let's continue. One second. I love it. <laughs> love it. Okay, so the dark the dark side of fasting is not that it's fasting itself. It's just doing it wrong, which would be malnourishing yourself or denying your body the nutrients it does need because when you're fasting you're still giving you still have a pretty large window relatively large right i mean depending on the person but a, a large window of when to give your body what it needs when to give your body those, those nutrients and calories you son of a bitch <laughs> so <laughs> let's just say that darflex is not fasting i'm just like <laughs> not darflex garbanzo so uh, I, I guess the thing would be extending t- extended periods of fasting is not sustainable okay. because you're gonna have a, a drop in blood sugar, which is obviously not a big, not a good thing. Your blood pressure may drop as well. You're gonna feel fatigued. You're gonna feel weak. You may go catabolic. So catabolic means that you know anabolic is you're building muscle. Catabolic you're losing muscle. So catabolic in the sense is just your body is eating itself to stay alive, and. That's what you want to avoid. So you don't want to be in a catabolic state. During your fasting hours, you're not going to be in a, ca- in a catabolic state if you are actually properly fasting because you have a good regulation of growth hormone and insulin as well as a good regulation of leptin and ghrelin, which are your hunger and satiety hormones. So now a quick question. Uh, only goes like, you know, now what's the ideal time frame um, for someone starting out fasting? Someone who's never fasted before, now, is it eight hours? Is it 10? Is it 12? Um, so 16 is the ideal when it comes to hormone regulation for the benefits. Though I think the, the better question is what kind of model of fasting should you follow? Because there's the 24-hour model. There's the three-day model. There's the warrior model. The best one that has the best results and is the most flexible for modern humans is going to be the 16 8 model which jason follow is sorry where vibe follows yes. which is also known as the lean gains because of the um hormonal manipulation of growth hormone it's it's very sustainable you do not have to cycle off of it because you're still eating your, you're still feeding your body so it'll be yeah. 16 hours of fasting ideally at least half if not maybe a little bit more 
should be you sleeping. Okay, when you're sleeping, you are in a fasted state, and then the additional eight should be you know when you wake and then do your morning routine, which is drink coffee or whatever, read a book or some BS, work out because when you work out and break a fast at the same time, your growth hormone levels will be the highest in both periods, and insulin will be the lowest in both periods, so it's best to just put them together and kind of, you know, boost your, which you don't have to, but it will give you the best bang for your buck. So, so, so the best time to break fast is after a workout? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Some, some kind of, some kind of intense activity, and with the 16 day fast, you don't have cycle off of it. Me, personally, I like to take Sundays off, by that I mean I will break my fast Saturday, at let's say noon, and I won't start it again till Sunday at eight. So from Saturday noon to Sunday at eight, I'm eating whatever I want. I'll have breakfast on Sundays, so that's kind of nice too. And you know, if you like to party, just you know, if you want to go out Saturday, you're able to do so because now you're in your in, in, in your break or your cheat day, so to speak, if you will. So that's a, that's what I like about the sixteen eight model. It's very flexible, and you can absolutely put it towards, uh, model it around your, your schedule and your social life. But the other one is kind of hard. Like if you're doing a 24 hour fast, you know, it's a 24 hour fast, it's a whole day. Or if you're doing like those warrior 72 hour fast at, at, at 72 hours, you know, like, but that's what, that, that would be more extreme cases for people who are trying to accomplish some kind of competitive goal, which I mean, I, I, none of us are, I, I don't think. I am. Hey, speak well, for yourself, buddy. I mean, I'm trying to go for best buddy here. Right. Our boy, yeah. Well, so that's why the 16-8 is best. Like, if you're going for an aesthetic goal, like you want to look better, want to feel better, want to drop a little LBs, the 16-8 is going to be your best bet. One, because it's very easy to do. Two, it's not so psychologically hard because the hormonal regulation of ghrelin, which is what makes you feel hungry, will mess with your mind if you don't properly, if, if you're not properly sensitive to it, right? So... Yeah. Uh, that's that's going to be your best bet. It's it's easiest. It's the safest. I mean, it's pretty hard to mess up. You'd have to be pretty dumb to do so. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's so it's so easy. It's so simple and and um, like it's far more sustainable in my opinion than any other um, routine I put for my dietary needs. And it's just it's just better. And, so, and, and the whole thing is that all joking aside, I actually when when uh, Flex had originally told me about the fasting um, last year, I actually. In the course of a, a, a month and a half of actually doing it without increasing my workload or workout, because I was so at the time I, I really wasn't working out, um, I started slimming down just from just from letting my body just burn itself. It was it was actually I started feeling better, I was sleeping better. So I'm actually all joking aside, I'm actually going back to the fasting once I get back from my cruise. And that's a good idea, so especially so. This is something most doctors won't tell you because it's sensitive, but if you're like a larger individual in the sense of body fat percentage. Small changes like that, you will see a huge difference because the stimulus your body for the most part for the entirety of your life has, has not had to deal with and now it has to deal with this. So it's going to work over time to ad adapt. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, our metabolic process in our body is literally just the body adapting. All you have to do is get the right stimulus, you know. Um, for example, I had a client who was like 300 pounds. I literally just had this dude sit up and down from, from, from a bench and that made a big difference because something his body has never done. I mean, obviously he'll plateau and we have to, you know, change it, but that's good. That's the goal because you want to make your body adapted to stronger and stronger stimulus every single, every single exactly. time. I mean, that's, that's basically, you know, speaking of plateauing, I plateaued and all Flex told me to do was, was do 10 sprints and mm -hmm. it, it locked me back up there losing, you know, a pound or two a week. So, it was, you know, it's, it's simply amazing um, what our bodies are capable of doing and with the right guidance. Um, well, thank you, sir. If you want to know more about fitness or nutrition or you just want to see the UFC uh, dino that he is, uh, follow him on his Instagram. At, that's Darflex, D-A-R-T-H underscore F-L-E-X-X -X, for all the goodness. So with that being said, we're going to move on to anime slash animation invasion. We're back to Love, Death, and Robots review part two, Three Robots. <sighs> Now, uh, long long I, after the fall of humanity, three robots embarked on, see, on a sightseeing tour of a post-apocalyptic city. Gentlemen, I love this episode. Uh, Garbanzo, you're up. Uh, let's let's uh, let's do the good, the bad, the ugly, the good. Dude, uh, the 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 good was just a narrative, just the way that they were talking about it, and the way they kind of the, the, their interaction amongst each other, the it, the 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 joking around. Um, uh, the just it was just it was just fun to watch. It's so very, so entertaining. 
uh, Flex. The good for me was yeah, it was the robots' personalities. Like a, a lot of them were pretty monotone, but like you 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 can see clearly what was trying to communicate through that. It was just pretty good seeing them walking into like what was our world, and I was you know barren, but uh, it was it was also Not really nice to look barren. at it. Well, yeah, but I mean, it was good. It was good, like just to look at it, the visual, and just listening to their voices. I thought they were pretty soothing voices, even the annoying little one. <laughs> He's my uh, favorite. Yeah, the good for me was the animation. I mean, the animation, I rewatched it again today uh, just so I had a fresh perspective for this. Like, I'm pretty much going to do for every one of them. Uh, the animation was spot on, man. I, I was like, wait a minute, was it this good when I watched it the first time? I don't. It's funny because I, I watched it and I, mean, I realized that even though Flex put me on to this, I don't think I started paying attention to episode three or four because I, re- I, I watched it like it was the first time I'm watching it. And I know I saw this, but nothing stuck. Besides the uh, the 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 voice of the cat, which is which, of course, when I when I um when I saw it, I, I immediately texted in the group chat and nobody responded. By the way, I said I said the voice of the cat is Jerry from from um from Rick and Morty, and that was the only thing I remembered from that episode originally. So animation was beautiful. The bad Garbanzo. Uh, honestly, I don't, I don't even have a bad for this one. Um, the the closest it's, thing. It's, that is quite all right. You don't have to force it if you. If you if yeah, you no, the closest. I mean, I mean, like I said, I just no, I, I don't have a bad. I just, I, I love, I love this, I love this episode. It's not my favorite episode, um, but it, it is still one of the one of the top five. Darflex. I'm gonna have to agree with Garbanzo. Um, they do a very good job of taking some, something so simple, make it an entertainment, and I, I think. Now I'm starting to realize it's it's pretty short, and, and I think that in that amount of time they they actually run the the episodes, they give you exactly what you need, and it doesn't run on too long to where it's just pointless, empty stuff that doesn't really have to be there. So yeah, I I, I did not find anything bad. Everything was pretty good about it. And it was pretty tasteful, and it was to the point. It made me laugh, made me smile, liked it. Uh, the bad for me was uh, a narrative detail. See, these are robots, right? And they're taking a tour of the city, and most of them are asking questions or speculating about what was what, you know, what humans use this for, what humans didn't use this for. And I'm like, well, you're robots. You were created by humans. You should have access to this information. This is what I'm thinking about. And then as I'm thinking about this, that's exactly what happens. The 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 murder bot 2000, whatever he called himself, he... The uh, Xbox. The Xbox, Xbox 3000 or whatever it was. He <laughs> said, one of the other ones made a comment saying, you know, you know, they, they use you know, the, something for teabagging. And he's like, well, what is teabagging? He's like, well, you know, we don't, we don't want you to, you know, to know about that. Don't look it up. So it, they just broke the narrative where the, the robots can look up the information that they're questioning that they're pretending to be naive about. And that drove me nuts. It's either you know everything or you don't. So when he looked up what teabagging was and it freaked him out, I'm just like, well, then why are you questioning anything that you see if you can literally just connect to the cloud and get your answer right there? Technically, these that none of these three should be. Should, I mean, it was it was funny their observations. It's funny how they try to interpret hum, humans, but it took me out of it. The minute that that that, that the that the Xbox 2000 could look up the information, that was it. I was like, okay, well then okay, none of this makes I, any sense. I, I will say this though. Also, maybe they had made a pact amongst each other not to do that. Just like, uh, just like you know, many times, like the whole thing happens with with a perfect example. There's the, there's the, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, sorry, like you know, like we go out and say, okay, guys, no phones. We put our phones down. We're just gonna watch, enjoy, and this, that, and the other. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. But true. And then maybe they said that, hey. We promise not not to look it up. We're gonna be blind, fine. But they didn't. They didn't promise that. They basically said, "No, don't look it up. Don't look it up. You don't want to see it." So I get what you're saying. But if they said that from the beginning, let's take a tour. Let's turn. Let's shut off our Wi-Fi and let's let's try and you know enjoy it. That would have made sense. But you know, or if or even if when he when he decided to uh to to um to break the rule, they said, "No, no, no. We promised we weren't gonna look it up. Don't look it up." You know, you it just. For me, it's narrative cues is what I'm looking for. You know, otherwise it was a great episode. But as soon as I saw that part, I'm just like, okay, well that breaks the whole thing. Like, you have no excuse to be naive about anything now. You have no yeah. excuse to be because because you can, you just proven you, you can look it up whether it's through Wi-Fi or through your own data banks. Um, the ugly, you probably have nothing. But no, I mean, just that why, how? how? That's what that's. I mean, the cat. Well, that, that's that's what it is. Oh, the cat. Yeah. <laughs> that's the ugly. <laughs> Dark Flex, the ugly. 
for me, the ugly is, once again, what I thought from the episode, they were able to take something so gloomy and doomy that is literally ugly. Like, mm-hmm. you know, a kid hanging himself in a basketball court and make it funny, make it something cool. So. That, that even cool as hell. <laughs> um, I have no ugly. Uh, my, only, my only gripe was that whole connecting connection to the Wi-Fi thing. Um, that's about it. Darth Flex, you need, you need to dip, dip out, don't you? Yes, sir. Okay, so before we dip out, I need to take our picture. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry, guys. You're just gonna, you're just gonna hang with us while we do this. I need to get my thing. Hold on, wait, wait. <laughs> Say something. Just sing or something. Cuando vivo solo sueño un horizonte falto de palabras. En las sombras en tres luces todo es negro para mi mirada. No cursing, Darth Flex. Si tú no estás. Okay, let's go. All right, you ready? All right, let's go. Let's see. Let me see what it looks like. Yeah, that's good. That works. Okay. All right. Love you guys. Flex, Flex thank you so much. We yep. will we will link with you next yes, uh next yes. week. Yep. Love you guys. Bye. All right. Be good. Bonzo, we're gonna continue on as as Joe Taro is absent and Darth Flex has to leave. We're gonna move on to Star Wars: The Clone Wars Revisited. Now, have you ever seen the animated Clone Wars? We're talking about the 2003 Cartoon Network short. Yes, Star, Star Wars: Clone Wars. Yeah, absolutely. What did you think of it? I'm, I liked it. Uh, it was gritty. Um, yes, yes, it, it, it was, was gritty. It, it was something that it was. It, it, it's. It, it's hard for me to say. Say it's, it's it's what I wanted in an animated series. Exactly. It was very it was very similar to a to the animation style of uh, Samurai, Samurai Jack. Jack. Well, it, you know, it was created and animated by the by those guys. George Lucas commissioned Samurai Jack creators to 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 do to do the the, the Clone Wars or so, Clone Wars. Excuse me. Well, but that, that's the whole thing is I, because of that and also because it's the, it, it was very well done the action sequences and things like that I mean I liked it a lot yes, I, I agree I agree specifically um, I rewatched it um, the other day because I don't know I was, I was in my feelings who knows and I forgot how badass that they they animated and they created General Grievous do you do, do you remember how, how sick Grievous was Grievous was, was scary as crap in, in, in the Clone Wars cartoon and they made it, him a joke. He, he 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 took out more than a few Jedi. Yeah, and we watched them do it. Now, could you imagine the the, the the General Grievous from Episode Three or from the actual The Clone Wars being that competent, being that scary? No, no. they turned him into a joke. I don't know why they decided to do that because the General Grievous in that show he he was look all right. He was intense. Yes, very intense. absolutely. And I'm telling you right now, after I had watched that, because because before it was it was you know it was canon before the, the the Clone Wars came, it ends with the invasion of Coruscant, where you actually see uh, Grievous chasing down uh, two Jedi's to take Chancellor Palpatine and gets him, and it and it leads right into Episode Three. And when I watch Episode Three, I'm like, hmm, those characters don't connect, because you know the cough that he has, you actually see what happened. That in the cartoon, Mace Windu crushes his uh, his chest plate. That's where he yeah. gets his cough. But the character you can't rectify the two the two um, or the two characters, the one from the Clone Wars cartoon and the one from the, from Episode Three, which inspired this portrayal in the Clone Wars. I was very disappointed because he was badass. Okay, and just to be honest, they uh, it was actually because of the that that. Um, the Clone Wars, the the cartoons short, which is one of the reasons I actually f- uh, fell in love with Kid Fisto. Yeah. Um. So and to see at uh, the same thing with Mace Windu and how much of a badass he was. Oh, and the dude, um, dude was punching robots with his fists. He was, dude, he was he, punching he, them and knocking them out with his fists. He was blasting them with his fists. He would just be like, and just cr- right. he was just it was force crushing left and right. It was amazing, and then. It, none of that happened. Uh, what I find what I find sad is that is that the way they portrayed the Jedi's powers and how they utilized them in battle in the and, and it was was so fully realized. I wish we saw some more of that in the live action. Punching, jumping, using the force. It's not just all lightsabers. If the lightsaber gets dropped, it's not over. They get they, they keep fighting, they punch, they, they they use the force, they use force push, they use force crush. I was like, Yes, this is the Jedi. This is what I'm talking about. Where is this? 
in in the uh, original, uh, sorry, the prequel series. Where is this in episode three? Nope, just more lightsabers, you know. And it's it's a shame because the potential for what a Jedi can be or can do was fully realized. Um, and I think only in that animated series, I'm trying to grab that. that did I get it? No, I didn't get it. Um, it was only fully realized, I believe, in an animated cartoon. No, there was some really good stuff in the Clone Wars, the the CGI show, but not to the extent that it was animated. And of course, with cartoons, uh, you know, hand drawn, it's a little easier, I guess, than maybe CG. But I don't know. I don't know how that is anymore now. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know. I don't know if it's it's easier or not. I, I'm I'm I can't. I I don't want to give my opinion because I'm not sure. Right, but um. Yeah, who knows? I I enjoyed it. I I watched it again, and it was great. And I'll probably keep coming back to it uh, in in the future because X, Y, and Z, it's a very good show. I recommend If you haven't seen uh, Star Wars Clone Wars, that's the 2003, you gotta go on YouTube. The whole, I think it was 15-minute shorts. They put it all together in like two hours, one long video. I recommend recommend it. Watch it. And then email us, geekbroswithazero, G-E-K-B-R-0-S at yahoo.com, or comment on on, um, on our YouTube uh, video recap. Uh, Whether or not you like that, you prefer that over the real Clone Wars, or you you both feel them equal, you like like one over the other, by all means, let us know. And actually, question, do you think it'd be possible to maybe add that link in the bio if you find it? Uh, If you find the the, the link for the uh, Clone Wars? Oh, for the the 20 minute, for the two hour supercut? Yeah. You think it would be possible? Yeah, I can. You mean in the by the description below? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can do that. Just remind okay. me. Yeah, actually, I, no, I, can, let me let me bring it up right now, so I can remember to put it at the bottom, so you guys can watch it. But guys, if I'm going to do this extra step for you, I fully expect you to watch this and then let us know. <laughs> okay, that's your homework. So we're gonna. That is it for anime slash animation invasion. We really did gadgets are us because I decided to skip. I don't know why. Time for open mic. Open mic. Open mic. Endgame is not the end of the current Avengers story. Now, that right there is just like, what? So this this article comes from Yahoo.com slash entertainment. Um, at a fan event in Shanghai ahead of the global release of Avengers Endgame later this week, Marvel Studios head Kevin uh, Feige dropped a bombshell. He unexpectedly announced that the final film of, of Phase 3 of the, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe would be Spider-Man Far From Home, and not as widely assumed the, the three plus hours of Avengers film. But I, I, you know, I thought that I thought that Spider-Man was going to be the end of it. It was going to be like the palate cleanser, like how um, yeah. that man was. In response to a question about Far From Home, Feige put it simply: "It, it's the end of the third phase." Adding that it's the first time um, he said that in public. Uh, there is some precedent for the for uh, for the move. Ooh. Um, Marvel ended Phase 2 not with a long, big, bloody Avengers Age of Ultron, but of course, with the lightweight Ant-Man. Yeah. Uh, something, something, you know, comedic. So, the tone of the first Spider-Man trailer and, and the less ambitious scope of the film suggests a, a dynamic change to play here. This reorganization of MCU comes comes soon after we learned about a slew of upcoming Disney Plus series that will dramatically expand uh, as they announce shows such as, you know, with major storylines and ramifications. That'll be both through uh, TV and future big screen productions. So, um, maybe, I, maybe, maybe they'll bring back the uh, in, Inhumans. You mean reboot them or bring them back from what, what we saw on ABC? Because that was an atrocity. No, reboot be nice. I hope they do reboot it because, I mean, that's a good series. I mean, they 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 they, 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 they ruined it. Um, it's unfortunate what happened to the Inhumans. I don't even want to talk about it. That's how sad because I really had high hopes for that. I was like, yes, Inhumans. I mean, I don't really like the Inhumans like that, but... That's the closest that we can get that we were able to get at the time to like mutants and to and to you know X Men type story. Would but you know, moving on. I just finished Star Wars: Master and Apprentice. Garbanzo, are you listening to the um, Garbanzo? What are you doing? You're all at the page. Are you listening sorry, to sorry. doing any more of the audiobooks? Yeah, I I actually I've been I've been I'm in the process of finishing another one, but that book is next in line. Um, that and also the eight uh, the A one. Hold on. The what one? There's another book that's coming out shortly after that. Oh, the Dooku one. Yeah, the Dooku one that's coming. A Jedi fall, Fallen Jedi or Jedi Fallen, something like that. Mm-hmm. Or Jedi Lost. Jedi Lost. Yeah, coming no, out it's, it, no yeah. I, have it pre, I have it pre-ordered. Yeah, I think Dooku, I have to Jedi have Lost. that one as well. And well Master of Prince, I already have it downloaded. It's ready to go. It's actually, yeah. I'm finishing up another one. Right. I actually love Claudia Gray's stuff. Uh, I think she's, she's a fantastic writer, and I'm really excited um, for that. There's also the new Thrawn book. Right, that's coming out. It's coming out in like 
several several you know months. A couple weeks. Then no, weeks. A weeks or months? No, okay. I, think it's, I think it's forty-two days away. I think that's what it said. I don't even go. I'll go on Audible right now and tell you what it says. Because, because I saw it at Celebration. So the book? No, the yeah. book is probably out, not the audio book though. Remember, the audio book comes out a little later uh, than yeah, the book. Yeah, but usually not not that much later. No, no, much later. What are you talking about? Always a lot later. It's crazy a lot later. Here it is. Here it is. Bring it up right now. Pre-orders. And Thrawn Treason comes out in 88 days. This the July 23rd, sir. So, really? Yeah. You, it's Dooku, Dooku Jedi Lost that's coming out in four days. And I can't wait for that because, because Master and Apprentice actually is like a prequel to that story because there's a lot of Dooku in that story. But um, Star Wars Master and Apprentice, this is a non-spoiler review. Uh, an une- unexpected uh, offer threatens the bond between Qui-Gon Jin and Obi Wan Kenobi as the two, as the two Jedi navigate a dangerous new planet and a new uncertain future in the first uh, canon Star Wars novel to take place before the events of Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. This is by Claudia Gray. Well, now, yes, it it's 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 a good book. It's a very good book. It was captivating. I love that they they, they flash. They believe it or not, they flashed back uh, to. Uh, you know what? Let's say it like this. Master and Apprentice means more than just Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. It really is about several masters and apprentices. They flash back yes. to, to Qui-Gon and Dooku. They flash back to another Jedi and Dooku. They fl- and they flash forward to, really? Obi-Wan, to Obi-Wan and, and, and Qui-Gon. The story is pretty much grounded in, this, in the situation between Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. But, it ta- but a lot of things that are happening in the present uh, can be can, harken back to the past with Dooku and, and um and Qui-Gon and Dooku and this other Jedi that I, you know, I will leave unnamed right now that has to do with the, is at the center of this conflict in this particular planet. And yes, there is a twist. And it's funny because anyone that knows me is I try to identify the twist before it happens. And I swore I knew what the twist was. And I was wrong. And I was like, what? I, I love that. And the sad part about it, though, is that I, I don't think it was telegraphed very well. I don't think if I if I re re listen to the book that I'll pick up on the clues that this twist actually happens. It it, it feels more of like an M Night Shyamalan twist than it really is like a okay like okay, like, like, like like a you should have picked up on these cues. But I'm thinking about it. I'm like there was no context clues that I can think of that eludes that that informs that. Oh my God, I should have known this because of this and this and this. But it, other than that's the only criticism that I have, and it's, that's minimum compared to. How much I enjoyed this book. I highly recommend it. Uh, as soon as one of the other Geek Bros reads it in its entirety, I'll have a full review with spoilers and everything and everything that we got from it. Okay. Uh, g- give me, I'll start it on, I'll start it up to to, to tomorrow. And yep. uh, as soon as I finish with it, um, well, I'm trying to find this new book that uh, that I'm yep. waiting for. It's actually, well, Black Spire's coming out. In fact, that one's basically going to put it back to backstory for Galaxy's Edge. I don't know Alpha if I'm getting um, oh, I'm, I'm, I, oh, I, I already pre-ordered up of a squadron. I did, a, I did that already, but I don't know if I'm getting Black Spire because I still, I still refuse to get Cobalt Squadron because Cobalt was so good though. That's what Flex said too, but it leads directly into the Last Jedi, which is, which is an eyesore. Oh my thing. god, dude! Seriously, stop being a little crybaby. Listen, the Last Jedi was terrible. I don't care what you want to say. It was a bad. It was bad. It was, and that movie ruined. Uh, you know, and severely hurt the franchise. I mean, it, it was downhill. Hey, from I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't look. Listen, personally, I don't think it ruined the franchise. Um, well, half the fan base disagrees with you, and if that, and that's pretty, pretty huge. Okay, it has worse reviews than the prequels on Rotten Tomatoes. Worse okay. reviews, but that's because that's because look, listen. Uh huh. Yeah, but, but I, uh, look, listen. I, you know me. I, I play devil's advocate as often mm-hmm. as possible. Right. And I have no, I have no quarrels with anyone's view. Like I'm also a fan. I'm also a big supporter of Jar Jar Binks. But whatever. Um, <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Um, so, but at the same time, look, I get people's gripes. I had those gripes for a while, um, but I had to look past them. I, I ended up just looking past them and, and understanding that um, not every story is meant for me. I understand that, but and it's not it's not it's not it's not even just that I didn't like the story, but it, a lot of it didn't make any sense. That's the problem. I'm looking at it from a creative. I'm looking at it from a from a from a from a you know an aspiring writer, an aspiring director, and it just it didn't make sense. You know, it's it it, it, it look. 
If you're going to radically change a world, a scenario, a character, you have to provide context, and no context was provided. No context was 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 provided for why Luke was the way he was. No context was provided for why the First Order was still on top of their game after their planet blew up. No context was really provided for. No, no context was provided at all for um for Ray. Like none of these things that should have been given give us somebody flesh it out so we can appreciate it you can't appreciate ray because you don't know about ray you can't appreciate luke's change because you don't know why he changed you still can't appreciate kylo ren because you still don't really know why why he changed you know you saw the last straw but that's that's i mean you know i, I just that's the I mean, problem. okay so so if you have gotten let's say 15 minutes of him overusing his power in the in jedi trials in front of luke yeah and if if you show me a, a training montage of him taking it too far, okay, and 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 okay, it is a better. Relationship. I think the Knights of the Old Republic. There was like there was a scene. I don't know. I, I don't remember which one it was. I've only ever watched the the cinematics. I never played the game. There's this there's this girl. It's, it's a little girl character, and she's strong in the force. And she's there's a montage there, and she's training. And there are these moments of darkness. And there's this one moment. Where she's she where she gets hit by the trainer guy gets really mad starts using her powers starts crushing she, his helmet yeah. mm-hmm. yes and he starts him. It almost kills him and the mother I think it's the mother says yeah. stop and she she snaps out of it and kind of smiles half heartedly she turns around the emperor is there and guess Who what is also her father uh, the, 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 that's actually part of the expansion oh recently, yeah okay. and I, I didn't right. read into that it's it's right. a it's a light side dark side of the force but it's a little bit different than the, right. the traditional one that we're used to. Right, so he takes her, so he ends up, he sees her, she turns around, she sees him, he's like, oh my god, he walks away, he ends up taking her, and they did some kind of, I don't know, dark dark magic on her, whatever, it's fine. But at least if they I played that game, her. right, but at least if I played that game, I don't know, okay, I see where this came from, you gave me a little montage, there's a fall. All we ever heard of was that Snoke was always looking looking at, at Ben, Snoke was whispering into his ears, supposedly, even since he was in, 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 uh, in Leia's stomach, and then the last straw was... Luke, Luke, uh, considered killing him for five seconds. That's not enough. I, that doesn't, is, what does that it, mean to it, me? But my whole thing is that I don't think that uh, you know, like, if they would put a little more context, like you know, like, I, and I think that they may say they'd be able to save episode eight with episode nine if they do things properly. If they actually do push out that the Emperor was maybe whispering in Luke's mind that Ben is going to turn on you, Ben's going to go to the dark side, pushing in those dark thoughts. Also, that he was the one, not Snoke, that was actually doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was Snoke, maybe it was just a proxy. You see what I'm trying to say? Right. I mean, I'm hoping, but I mean, again, and if they do, luck- it, it, it'll be, it'll, it'll kind of, I think that they're going to try to use, and I, and, I mean, episode 9-1, not, 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 not so much to, right. not, not so much to patch, patch it. It's going to be a patchwork. Get, you know it's patchwork. It's gonna, they're, they're absolutely well, putting patching it. It may be almost to validate the reasoning behind it. Because it's like it's almost it's like be- they it's like it's like Rhea, well not just that but my whole thing is this I think Rian Johnson knew what was happening in episode nine and basically knew that everything maybe everything would be answered in episode nine but just left a lot of questions and did think that you know Garbanzo it's made it they made it very clear there was no plan there was no plan <laughs> for this that 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 uh, JJ did have an outline for episodes. Um, uh, eight and nine, but that Ryan Johnson, and Catherine Kennedy threw it out in favor of their own thing. There was no plan. So if you just sit here and believe, oh, Ryan Johnson, you know, gave us like had us spitting our wheels in mud because he knew somebody else was going to answer to nine. No, there was no answer for nine. There was no none of that. There, there, there was no plan. <laughs> You okay. know, even J- right. JJ went on record to say that there was no plan and that that and that they had to sucker him hard to come back to to, to episode nine. You know, because now he has to he has to. Trying to fit his original vision and then answer all the questions and and, and the fuck ups from Last Jedi, he kind of didn't want to do it. I forget what he said that that had him convince him to come back. Besides, besides backing up a big stick of money to him, so, and I'm sorry guys that it's, that it's, it's it's gotten back to another whiny vibe hates the Last Jedi, but he really does. You know, it, it, I, it, I really do. So we're gonna move on to and this is supposed to be Flex's topic because he loves this stuff. The family of J.R.R. Tolkien. Do not approve of the new biopic. So I didn't even read the article because I expected him to do it. This, this article comes from Yahoo.com. So entertainment. The family of J.R.R. Tolkien have distanced themselves from an upcoming biopic about the author and do not approve of this new film. Famed and created Hobbit at, uh, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, British writer is the subject of a new film starring Nicholas Holt. He's the, the person who plays uh, Young Beast in the X-Men movies. 
uh, in their first statement made by the Tolkien estate regarding the biopic, the family of the author said that they do not endorse the Fox Searchlight production in any way. As the UK premiere of the film approaches, the family wished to make clear that they did not participate in the production, which uh, charts Tolkien's friendship and his relationships with, with Edith Bratt, whoever that is. Um, and the statement said, the family of J.R.R. Tolkien and the Tolkien estate are aware of the Fox Searchlight motion picture entitled Tolkien, uh, due release May 2019. The family in the estate wish to make it clear they do not approve of it, authorize, or participate in making this movie at all. They do not endorse it or its content in any way. So that makes me wonder, like, hmm, what is in this that's so bad that they, that they don't that there's that they're taking these extreme steps to distance themselves from this? Uh, I love me some Lord of the Rings. I yeah. tolerate me some 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 Hobbit, but oh my god, dude, Hobbit! The story of the Hobbit is so much. It's so much better than don't go by the movies, man. Don't go by the movies. Read the book. Okay, that's all I've got. But it it the, 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 Hobbit the was... movies. Wait, okay, perfect. Let, let me explain. Okay. Okay. So the the almost half the stuff that happened in in the Hobbit movies, right, didn't happen in. The of Hobbit course, movie. it was all padding. The, I know the female elf didn't exist either. Legolas wasn't there either. Um, yeah, I know about a couple of that stuff. There's so much, but the the, the story itself it, it's a really good read, man. Fantastic read. Okay, that's fantastic. What do you think about uh, Tolkien's estate distancing themselves from this to- Tolkien biopic? I mean, my whole thing is that maybe they're bringing to, maybe they're bringing things to light that they that they they don't agree with. Uh, maybe a, a certain collaboration with somebody else mm. that is is gonna oh, yeah. maybe open it up to somebody, open up someone else's to to to, to, to reach into the into that estate's pocket. Um, the, so it, there could be a lot of different stuff. We'll, True. we'll just, it, it, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to kind of see it. Um, maybe they make him out to be like a, a, a crazy man or something like that at one point, oh, you God. know, creating languages and, you know, create, you know, creating maps and, and whole worlds on, you know, on napkins and stuff like that. I, I don't know. Maybe another beautiful mind kind of situation, you know? Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Well, let's know if you guys are interested in watching this biopic. If you're curious, uh, I might catch it uh, just so I can do a, a you know, like a Greek Geek Bros rewind or a follow up on the story. Uh, I don't really care much for the biopic. Uh, Tolkien is not as special to me as he is to some people. I just do appreciate the Lord of the Rings, and I unfortunately always thought the Lord of the Rings was a Peter Jackson thing. Um, and I, you know, it, I did. I was like, okay, I, like I knew. Wait, I knew hold on. Only because he's not here, you uncultured swine. You're right. You're absolutely right. But it's because you know most most no, no, a good chunk of movies are are based upon books that have been written. So you know, and 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 those writers rarely, if ever, get any you know get any. I wouldn't I, you know any props or any any recognition. And, they probably, and that's actually true. Yeah. They, yeah, they just buy the rights to it and then and then change it up as they see fit. So I thought the Lord of the Rings was yeah I knew it was a, I knew it was a. Uh, book but i didn't know that it was like a, a book you know yeah. with an established writer with, with, with established um you know lore and established fan base i just thought it was, you know, it was yeah. another book series that they, that they bought you know so, so well, uh, i'll give you i'll give you another one that actually that the movie itself um ended up just bombing for what god knows what reasons but the book series was actually phenomenal uh i am number four. Oh yeah i re- remember that i have a fly or a that in my in my studio and I can't by, get it by by Pritikus Lore. Now I'm gonna say Pritikus Lore is just, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming someone's on the plume, um, but the 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 whole thing is that the the book series it's I mm. I think it's almost twelve different books. Oh. I've read every single one of them and it was fantastic. Um, it's very interesting the lore itself is, the way it established itself. It's actually very it's really cool how they do it, um, and it's a lot more grandiose than the movie actually was. On top of that, then you also have other ones like uh, uh, True Blood, uh, which is actually based off the Suki Stackhouse series. You know, which isn't actually True Blood, isn't True Blood like on 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 HBO? HBO, yeah, okay. They completely veered away from the books, and it went. Weird. Oh, they did. Wow. Uh, okay, okay, then, then, okay, then, since you know, uh, what is it? Winter is coming. What is that nonsense? Game of Thrones is that following the book? Okay. There's five books. Okay. Each book was one season. Season six, mm-hmm. season seven, and season eight have not been written. Now, the way that w- the way that it was explained was that the writer himself told the directors who dies, in what area, and how they die, 
So all the deaths are correct. And how they die. And all the middle stuff is just kind of filled in. But the books themselves are still in the process. He writes on an old typewriter. A classic... No, it was not a, no it was, I'm sorry. It was like a 888... Eight, 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 oh, remember those... Old 836 uh, desktops, like the old Apple ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's basically what he types his, his stuff on. Really? Interesting. All it's right. Just, it, took, it, takes him, it takes him about four or five years for every book, according to what people have been saying. Well, that's dedication, I think, or yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just really want to – I just want the next books, the book already come out. I mean – uh, yeah, but if, but if you're gonna watch it before it comes out, then I'm just like, you know. What, yeah, what? but I I know the fact. I know for a fact the book's gonna be completely different. That's why I can I can do that without a. Now I will say this though. They he did put out a prequel book. <laughs> before he put out a, a new book, to be honest. Um, so I'm just double checking here. Okay, what are you checking for? See if they actually have a new one coming out. No, I just don't want to double check. Iron. F- uh... Okay, no, they don't have. No, they don't have any any new. The the most recent one is Fire and Blood, and that one's like three hundred years before um, the actual current series right now, which goes into the Targaryen history and and explains who the the uh, Black Fire, uh, the Black Fire bloodline is. And the black fire, the black fire, uh, fire, uh, black fire battles, and things like that. So, um, but that's basically it. That was the most recent book in the Game of Thrones series um, that he's actually basically f- finished. So we're still waiting on on book six. Okay. Cool. Well, we're gonna wrap it up. That's the end of this episode. But before we go. Shameless social media promotion. By all means, Garbanzo, take it away. All right. Uh, for those who want to check me out on Twitter, and, on a Twitter, and on the Instagram. Uh, Instagram is actually it's a uh, Darth Bean two seven eight. Um, it's also you can find me at uh, Bean TK eight two seven eight on Facebook as well as on Twitter. Um, and uh, soon, uh, soon will be I'll be. Having a new, uh, basically a public page where we opening up to kind of easier for people to find me. It's going to be called Garbanzo's Corner. Um, I just, I just, I just finished putting it together. I'll be uh, uh, pushing that out shortly. Just oh. so, just to kind of, you know, if anybody has any stuff that they want to, they, any kind of stuff they want to see or if things we want to talk about besides the uh, Geek Bros page, we have another one there just to kind of goof around on. I like it. I like it. Well, guys, um, Darflix was here. You can you can see uh, Darflix on uh, that's on his Instagram. That's Darth D A R T H underscore F L E X X and Inebriated Fitness. Uh, no, Inebriated Craftsman. That's Inebriated Craftsman. Yes. I don't remember how to how to spell that one. I think it's uh yeah. Look, it's Inebriated yeah. underscore Craftsman. Look it up. I, I I can't spell that for you guys right now. Uh, myself, you can check me out. That's uh, uh Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Facebook, that's Vibra Studios, V I B E R E V S T U D I O S. If you want to see all the Geek Bro stuff plus more, the studio pumps out way more than just Geek Bros. You might even find something there that you might like, even more podcasts. The, the studio that produces this lovely, lovely podcast and more is VibraStudios.com. Uh, check that out. And of course, Geek Bros, all right, our Instagram is Geek Bros with a zero, G E K B R zero S. Twitter, add us. Um, at Geek Bros with, with a zero, G E K B R zero S. Email us, Geek Bros with a zero at yahoo.com. That's G E K B R zero S at yahoo.com. Facebook.com slash Geek Bros with a zero. You can, of course, you can listen to all our episodes for the first place in catalog of the Geek Bros, WoodyGeeksPC.com. And, of course, for the time being, watching our web series and our video recaps of podcasts like these at YouTube.com slash Vibra Studios. So, Thank you so much, Garbanzo. I've been Vibe, and don't forget, geeking out still sounds this good. Keeping up with the Geek Bros.